This is far and away the most exciting time in my entire career in sustainability. This is the most terrifying time in my sustainability career. Finally, my colleagues understand and appreciate what I do. I finally feel seen. Suddenly, everybody wants a piece of me. I don't even have time to think. My remit keeps growing. I'm taking on new, more impactful, and exciting new projects. I've got more and more to do, but no additional staff or budget. My company truly seems to be part of the solution. I'm so proud of them. I'm afraid we're just tinkering at the margins. We're not really taking on the hard stuff. I wish we spent more time promoting the good work that we're doing. I worry that we're spending too much time celebrating incremental change. I love my job because I get to learn every single day. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. I'm so excited about the year ahead. I'm not sure how I'm going to get through another stressful year. I can't wait to get up in the morning to do my job. I can barely sleep at night worrying about my job. We're taking on more high visibility projects. A lot of what we're doing just feels like window dressing. I do all this for my kids. My kids think I'm greenwashing. I am so energized. I'm exhausted and burnt out. I finally have the team that I've always wanted. My best people keep getting hired away. I am so appreciative of my company. I am so frustrated with my boss. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing. I need to keep my options open. I am incredibly optimistic. I'm unbelievably scared. I am so energized. I am so exhausted. My heart is so full. My heart is breaking. How the hell am I supposed, am I supposed to, to do, do my job? My job? And sing. Okay. I'm guessing that the inner conversation that you're having is a little less dramatic than what I just depicted here. But I'm also guessing that some of that resonated. Some of that sounded a little bit like what you have, have rattling around your brains maybe every day. Oh, and by the way, if it didn't, we need to talk. <laughs> Um, but this is the duality of our daily life. Every day, it seems, is this roller coaster of hope and optimism, followed by frustration and disappointment, uh, gratifying progress, uh, countered by uh, just soul-sucking blockades and barriers in our companies, uh, highs and lows, up and down and back again. And before you know it, it's time for lunch. But this is how we roll. This is our life. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald once said that the, the sign of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposite thoughts in your head at the same time. So one should theoretically be able to look at something that seems hopeless and yet be determined to think otherwise, make it otherwise. And it sounded a little bit familiar, perhaps, for the world, the life we live. In that, in that same vein, uh, back in uh, April 2000, just as the pandemic was really hitting its stride, I was reminded of the Stockdale paradox. Now, some of you may uh, know the story of Admiral James Stockdale. He was the highest ranking US uh, prisoner of war in Vietnam. He was held in, uh, in and around various prisons around in Hanoi for seven and a half years, a lot of it in solitary confinement. He was brutally tortured and beaten, just unspeakable conditions. But unlike most many of his colleagues, he made it out. And a number of years later, the business best-selling guru, Jim Collins, good to great, um, encountered him and asked him, in effect, how did you do it? How did you make it through? To which Stockdale responded, you can never confuse the faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. I'll say it again. You must never lose faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, 
with the discipline to confront the brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. At the time, back in April 2000, that felt like a good way to think about it and frame the pandemic, because we didn't know what was going on. We just knew this was, it was different and horrible. And how are we going to get through this thing of, of indeterminate length? Maybe still having those thoughts. But it's also a lot about how we live in sustainability. We can never lose the faith that we will prevail in the end, and yet we must stay tuned in and cognizant of the brutal facts of our current reality. So how do we do that? Can we? I don't pretend to have the answers, and all of us need to find our own. Uh, I'm guessing that many of you have some version of the Stockdale paradox, as it came to be known, in your brain. The stories you tell yourself about the importance of what you do, and trying to square that with this daily barrage of dismal, disheartening news. But if we're to be as effective as we need to be in this moment, we're going to have to tune into those inner voices, the unwavering critic, the relentless critic, and the constant cheerleader, both sides of that, and continually calibrate so that we can maintain the equilibrium we need to do our jobs. So that's part of why we're here this week, to step back, reflect, refresh, maybe be a little bit vulnerable in a safe and supportive environment of like-minded souls, and to ask the questions that you may not get to ask, if only of yourself. So my inner voice sounds something like this. As I stand here today, I am four days away from my 70th birthday. And no one is more blown away by that sentence than I am. <laughs> Trust me. And I know 70 is just a number, just another birthday, and people have been telling me it's not even that big of a number. But consider this. The average life expectancy of a male born in the United States in 1952 is 73.7 years. 73.7 years. I'm 70. That will sharpen the mind. And by the way, I've done the arithmetic. Hello, November 1st, 2025. <laughs> and I'm not planning to go anywhere. I fully expect to be standing right here welcoming you to Green Biz 26, 27, 28, 29. I don't know what your 20, 30 commitments and goals are, but mine are to be 100% right here. <laughs> but undeniably, that horizon is getting closer. So as I tune into the 24-7 radio station that plays in my brain, and each of us has one, my call letters are KJOL, 50,000 watts of of nonstop yammering and jabbering. Boy, I wish I could turn that off, change the channel once in a while. But the, recently, the programming wizards over at KJOL have been firing up a playlist that's heavy on ponderous questions. How long do I get to keep doing what I do? What's my highest and best use? Should I raise my voice in frustration and anger at the scale, scope, and speed of change? Should I uh, question some of, the, some of the truths around which we all operate? Maybe poke at some sacred cows at the risk of pissing some of you off? Should I retain, remain the, uh, the gentle persuader that's sort of gotten me to this point? Where should I be leaning in? Where should I be stepping back? I bet many of you have some versions of those questions, whether your horizon is four years or 40. So here we are with this safe and supportive environment, you know, trying to understand where we are and who we are and how we navigate this remarkable time. It really is a remarkable time, uh, just to understand how we got to this place. And, but more important, what does this mean, what we do, in this moment. I don't know how many of us get to stop and reflect and refresh and reboot and think about these things, but this is very much the time to be doing that. So 
I want to leave you with something slightly less dramatic than I started with. And while I'm not one to recite poetry ever, I do want to share with you the last line of a poem that's stuck with me and I think was appropriate, it's appropriate here. The poem is called A Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Uh, it goes back to, uh, I think it's back to about 1990. I, I first learned it about a decade later and it has been rattling around my brain. And in this relatively short poem, the subject, maybe it's the author, we don't really know, is lying or sitting in the grass, just taking it all in. The grass, the birds, the grasshoppers, the sounds. Just having a luxuriating on an introspective day. And at the very end, she asks a question of seemingly no one in particular. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Your one wild and precious life. That phrase has been, keeps recurring and rattling around my brain for years, never more so than lately. What is each of us gonna do with our one wild and precious life? What is our highest and best purpose? Where do we lean in? Where do we need to step back? I hope that uh, this, you know, being here this week, I think is a really great place to do that, to, to take in and, and take advantage of this week, this amazing place, this incredibly supportive, collaborative, creative, embracing community. And to maybe tune into your own 24 seven radio station maybe even share a hit tune with somebody else. I know there is no place on the planet <clears throat> that I would rather be doing that this week than right here. And no community that I trust more than this one to let me, let all of us do that and to have our backs. Thank you for that, for being here and for all you do. And with that, my friends, Welcome to Green Biz 22.